Well, 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 we finally have our guest on the line. I'm very excited. Kevin Weeks is a guy very well respected throughout the NHL, played for the Rangers, played for the Florida Panthers, had a great NHL career. Kevin, what's going on, my friend? I'm good. Thanks for the warm intro, guys. Uh, everybody's healthy, most importantly, and safe. Hopefully the same side, same on your side. And, uh, yeah, it's been, a, as we all know, 2020 has been wild. It's been an emotional roller coaster, especially with so many different things from COVID to different people passing to the lockdown to social distancing to all the racial inequality for the, for those of us that are black and people of color and everybody else that's interconnected with us too. So it's been, uh, it's been really challenging, but all that being said, doing well. I, I mean, it, it is great to hear, you know, that you're doing well and um, you know, it has been a tough year for all of us. And, you know, we, we took a loss yesterday as well. Yeah. Uh, Chadwick Bozeman uh, passed away. You know, he played Jackie Robinson, a uh, black Panther, uh, there's just been so many, so many things that have gone wrong in, in this year. How do you stay positive? How do you stay optimistic in these times? Yeah, uh, deepest condolences to them, too. You're so right. I actually loved him in Defy Bloods, too, by, uh, by Spike. I don't know if you guys had a chance to see that, but make sure you do see that one if you haven't. What a, what a challenge it's been to stay positive. I mean, fortunately, I'm an upbeat person. I'm a high-energy person got great family so very fortunate to have that on both sides of our family but uh that being said the biggest thing is just being grateful for health outside of these hives that I've been having for about five months but being being grateful for good health and great family also the fact that there's so much opportunity that's out there and there's so many different things that we can do that are bigger than us and continue to help in those areas but also continue professional pursuits personal family stuff so in that sense, it, it's helped to kind of offset so much of the negativity and pain that we're certainly experiencing, that a lot of people have experienced, and also a lot of people that have been compassionate towards us are experiencing as well. So just trying to keep that good mind frame. You know what it's like, EC, especially when you were playing, sometimes things don't seem like they're going right. And the media might be on you. You're on yourself, the TV uh, critics, maybe some of your teammates, maybe position coach, but it's just trying to find ways to stay positive every day and wake up and look at every day as a new game, so to speak, or a new challenge. We are talking to former NHL goaltender and NHL analyst Kevin Weeks. Now, Kevin, let's get into the NHL playoffs. And we're here in New York. We're here in Long Island. And the New York Islanders are tied 1-1 with the pesky Philadelphia Flyers. What is your thoughts to Barry Trotz's defense and what the Islanders are doing right now in the NHL playoffs? Well, I mean, the biggest thing for the Islanders is the combination of – Lou Lamorello, the great Lou Lamorello, who was the architect of the Devils, who I played for with the Devils. You know, he led them to five Stanley Cup appearances. They won three. He's a Hall of Fame general manager and, and an even better person and a great leader in general. And then the hiring of Barry Trotz as their head coach, which is a, you know, a huge coup for them, for the Islanders. Everything for the Islanders changed in those two masterstroke moves. And from that, that really was able to set the culture and the atmosphere for the, for the organization on a whole new course. So – professionalism, accountability, decency, uh, being team first, committed to team defense, being difficult to play against, being consistent in all those habits every day as people and as pros. It's changed the Islanders, man. And, you know, Barlamov has played exceptionally well so far this playoffs. He didn't have very much help last game. Matthew Barzell's a two-time All-Star already as a young player. beauvillier has been great. So they've been doing it by way of team committee, defending first, playing for each other first with the crest on the front of the jersey instead of the name on the back. And obviously, the Islanders, for me, have been such a great story this year. But really, they've been a great story since that since Lou Lamorello got up in the GM chair and president chair and Barry Trotz went behind the bench. It's completely transformed the organization. So, Kev, you know, looking at the Islanders, what, where, what is their, what is, do you think that they have an opportunity to make some noise and to, to win that Stanley Cup this year? I, listen, I know it's far-fetched. I know they're a young team, but do you give them a, you know, a decent chance? I do. And the reason why I say that they, ha they have a good chance is the fact that they're in game. They don't chase games. And you know this yourself. If your team defends well, you don't have to chase the, you don't have to chase the score clock. And even on offense, you don't necessarily have to make plays or try to, try to really stretch to put points on the board. So it's the same thing with the Islanders. They don't have to stretch to generate offense because by their nature, they're not a very offensive team. They're a defense first, second team, really, if you will. But then they get natural chances by defending well. So 
I think that when you, when you defend as well as you do, you're in every game, you have a chance to win a game, and you'll win way more than you'll lose. That being said, there's still some elite teams that are still left in the East, in Boston, uh, of course. I love Boston's team. Tampa, I mean, that series might go seven between those two teams, so at least you eliminate one of them if you're an Islander fan. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then, of course, too, the biggest thing is just health for the Islanders as they go forward. But they've been really impressive. They, they're at the dance. They're dancing well, so to me, they've got as good a shot as anybody, just like Philly down the turnpike from us here in Jersey, just like Philly does. Philly's been a disruptor this year, and they're now a contender too. So uh, really great stories with both the Islanders and the Flyers here well, in this kind of northeast corridor here. Speaking of dancing, I mean, who do you think will win in a dance competition? Me or Eric? Come on, Kevin. Be honest here. I mean, I got some grooving, man. I think I, I, think I could beat him in a dance competition. What do you think, Eric? You, uh, yeah, go ahead, EC. No, I was going to say, you don't, need, you don't need to answer that question, Kevin. We already know. We already know how you feel. <laughs> well, he doesn't know me, so that's not fair. That's not fair. He knows you. He doesn't know me. That's not yeah. fair, Eric. That's not fair. Oh, that's funny. Uh, no, so, so Kevin, Kevin, I wanted to ask you. You'll be the hype man. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I did, I did want to ask you, you know, as a former safety, you know, I tend, you know, when watching football, I watch the safeties first. You know, sure. that's, that's the way that I watch the game. You know, mm -hmm. you being a former goaltender, you know, I, I'm sure that's the way you watch it as well. Uh, there have been some impressive performances in the playoffs so far. You know, mm -hmm. who are some of the, the, the young goaltenders or the, the, the goaltenders that have stood out to you in these playoffs? That have caught my eye. I mean, for sure, I got to start with uh, – Carter Hart for the Philadelphia Flyers. I mean, that kid just turned 22. And he's their next franchise goalie. The fact that he's that good, this young, that composed, this young. He went up against his idol, and Carey Price, the, the stud goalie for the Montreal Canadiens, who's a future Hall of Fame lock, and in the first round, and they beat them. And, and to play against your idol at the other end of the rink, and I know this is a young goalie because when I got to the league, a lot of my hockey cards and sticker books and posters were actually – on the ice playing against me. And sometimes it was a little bit trippy. Like you believe in your game, you know your game, but you're like, oh, whoa, oh, that's Gretzky tonight. Shoot, okay, whoa, that's Mary Lemieux tonight. All right, cool, uh, yeah, I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? But he never had any of that in him. He doesn't have it, he respects them, but he doesn't defer to them. And he's just so mature beyond his years. So I would say him. I would also say the big cat, the big Russian cat, uh, as he's known, the big cat, Andre Vasilevsky in Tampa. They're young goalies, 25 now, 20. But, I mean, he came into the league at 20, 21. He won the Vezina Trophy last year as goalie of the year. He's a finalist for it again this year. Their goalie coach in Tampa, too, my man, uh, Franz Jong, is uh, the only black goalie coach in the NHL as well. And he's had five of the last seven Vezina Trophy finalists. Wow. Yeah, including Vasilevsky again this year for him in Tampa. So he's doing an amazing job there. I had a chance to speak to him the other day. So big ups and props to him. He's doing an outstanding job. But those would be two of the young guys, though, EC, as far as goalies that have caught my eye so far here in the playoffs that, at, at that age, at like a 25 and under. We are talking to former NHL goaltender and NHL network analyst Kevin Weeks. You were talking about Tampa and, and, and Boston and what the Boston Bruins have done. Uh, and, and I think the Boston Bruins have been the best team in the NHL for the last three years. I was at the Stanley Cup last year, and I really thought they were going to win the Stanley Cup. St. Louis just had a hot goaltender, and they, play, they have great team defense. And Craig Berube is an outstanding coach. He really proved that he's an outstanding coach. Bringing St. Louis to the playoffs again just got knocked out in the first round. But what are your thoughts with Boston right now? Tampa, who's been a team that really, with all the talent that they have over the years, have fallen off every single series over the years. Now all of a sudden they're up 2-1 against the great Boston Bruins. Where do you see this series going, especially with the speed of the Tampa Bay Lightning? I mean, to me, team to team, I, I've always, I would always tip my cap to Boston instead of Tampa, although they're, they're so close. The only reason is, Boston can play in every phase, in every facet of the game. So if they need to be physical, they can do it. If they need to defend, they can do it. Typically, when Tuka Rask is there and, and Halak, they have one of the best duels in the league. But Tuka Rask, as you know, opted out of the bubble. And I'm not sure that he's coming back. I think that's the end of it for, for this season for him. So that's a big change for them, although Halak is really good. Then uh, Boston can score in different ways, and they have arguably the best top line in the league. And all three of those guys in that top line are world-class players, two of them future Hall of Famers too, probably. So I love Boston's team and their consistency and their identity. Tampa 
is stacked. Their team is stacked. High octane offense. I mentioned their goalie, Andre Vasilevsky, who's money. But one of the things about Tampa that makes this a closer fight for me this year between these two teams is now Tampa has more jam. They're more physical. Before they were a team that was highly skilled, but maybe a little too pretty, a little bit too ticky-tack in terms of making plays. But you put the body on them, and sometimes they would shut down. And they also didn't defend as well, even though they have a great goalie. He just used to bail them out a lot because they were so high octane on offense. All that to say Tampa's more complete now. They've added players to their group, like Patrick Maroon, who won the Stanley Cup as a St. Louis native, I might add, for his hometown Blues last year. Blake Coleman, who they got from the Devils. Uh, East, you probably, you know, are, are fond of his last name. Oh, yeah. Saying. <laughs> Re- represent. Is he right? Right? He's been nice. Coleman He's Express. Been nice. Yeah, exactly. He's been <laughs> nice with it. He's been really, really nice with it this year. He was, to me, he was the Devils' best player before trade deadline and, and Tampa acquiring him. Barkley Goudreau, Braden Point for me is probably their best all around player, number 21. So, all that to say, when the games get tight, when they get physical, Tampa doesn't go away they used to, uh, the way they used to, excuse me. And that's what makes that challenge between Boston and Tampa closer than it probably would have been in other years for me. Now, now Kev, are you surprised that, that talented teams like the Penguins, the Predators, and the Blues mm-hmm. fell in their playoff matchups the way they did? To some extent, I had the Blues repeating. I had the Blues repeating this year because everybody, for the most part, was healthy. But the big challenge for the Blues is Vladimir Tarasenko, their, their, their sniper, really, their goal scorer. He had shoulder surgery, then he wasn't 100% quite right. I don't think the shoulder, the shoulder surgery was as successful as they all hoped it would have been. And he had to opt out of the bubble at the end for, for more medical attention and second and third opinion on his shoulder. Um, that being said, the Blues, same thing. I, I thought they were going to roll and get right back there. But Washington, I mean, they're still stacked with Ovi, with Ovechkin. You thought they would have pushed through. Obviously, Pittsburgh with Sid, Sidney Crosby. I mean, those are some of the best players in the history of our game between him and Ovechkin and Malkin on Pittsburgh, too. But here's the thing, as you know this all too well from your playing days. You look at rosters. You look at records. We read scouting reports. You look at charts. You do video. You do all these different things. At the end of the day, got to line up and play the games. As right. you guys- and, oh. Yeah, sorry, I'll just jump on that too, ahead, for, the listeners, for the listeners. Even if you're playing like flag football, even if you're like playing street hockey, road hockey, it doesn't really matter. Like if you're playing outdoor hoops, you actually have to go out and execute. So a lot of times people look at the matchups and the standings and the seedings and all these different things. And as you know, former athletes, we look at all the things I just mentioned at EC, and then you're like, oh, uh, we just got smoked. Like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's one of the great things about sports. And that's where sports keeps you humble and it keeps you so honest, no matter how great you are as a player or how deep or stacked or great you are as a team. You got to go out there and get it done. And that's one of the things that makes sports so unique and so challenging for me. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's so many times you have these, these paper champions you know, people exactly. who have everything lined up in the stat sheet, every position filled, but they don't play together as a team. They don't play as a unit and, and it doesn't happen. So, I mean, that's a great point that you bring up. Mm, thank you. Yeah, that, that's, that's just, it's hard. And I feel like what's hard too is in society now, we have so much access. Like before it was 10 cents for me anyway, I'm 45. I was lucky, 10 cents, nickel, quarter, maybe 35 cents, maybe 50 to go to a convenience store. <laughs> like, that's what it was growing up in the 70s and 80s. You know what I mean? Like, are you getting a sour key? Ooh, I don't know. You're going to get a pack of nerds? Ooh, I'm not sure. Can I afford that? You know, now everything's point, click, swipe, accessible. Everything is so much better in that sense from an accessible, but it's kind of changed the way people see things. So mm-hmm. people, everything's just on demand. You know what I mean? Like, I remember when we had, when we did, the remote that we had, the old school Gerald remote, was like a push a push button one on the brown box. Yep. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> like, or, or the rotary phone. So the reason why I say that is especially because we have all that access to tech and all these different things, people think the same way now a lot of times when they look at sports. They're like, ah, oh, that's my team. So let me just log on to this and my squad's going to win because the stats stay this. It never works like that. Sports is one of the ultimate outliers where that's concerned. And you just got to go out and earn it and get some breaks along the way.